You're about to learn the most effective, brain dead, and easy to follow rule that literally anyone can use to improve their Mythic Plus score. Now, you're probably already thinking, that sounds too good to be true, right? Well, if I asked you to name the biggest factor that sets apart high IO players from the average Mythic Plus enthusiast like you and me, what would you say? Hold on, before you pause the video and jump into the comments, not having to deal with a group finder is of course a big one. But the biggest factor? Well, think back to the last key you did. I'm willing to bet at some point during that run you thought to yourself, should I pop my cooldowns here? This very question right here is the ultimate game changer that distinguishes high level players from the rest of us. We can all immerse ourselves in countless online guides, painstakingly refine our rotations, master dungeon mechanics, or even just simply rely on weak auras to do it for us. But here's the kicker. There isn't anywhere that just tells us simply when to use our cooldowns in every dungeon. Well, that's exactly what you're going to learn in today's guide. But first, if you're feeling stuck at your current score, where you just can't push no matter how hard you try, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses you can find anywhere, including dungeon walkthroughs from some of the best players in the world like Echo's very own Maras, class courses made alongside some of the best and most renowned players of your spec, and so much more. We're so confident in our service that we're able to promise that you will gain at least 500 IO while using our guides. And if you don't, well, then we'll refund you. No questions asked. We're able to offer this because instead of rehashing the same old basics you've heard a million times before available all over the internet, we focus on pinpointing the exact areas where players like you truly need to improve. So what are you waiting for? Spend less time in Group Finder and get the score you've always wanted this season by clicking the link in the description below. Deciding and learning when to pop cooldowns presents such a huge challenge for players because there's always countless factors influencing our decisions, and even more so if you don't know your tank's planned route, a luxury we often don't get in pugged keys. Because of this, every key we end up asking ourselves questions like, should I pop my cooldowns now or wait for a larger pull to maximize their impact? Will my cooldowns last the duration of this pack? Would my cooldowns offer greater value on the tougher trash mob ahead? Can I use my cooldowns here and still have them available for the upcoming boss? In turn, delaying or holding onto our offensive cooldowns all in the hopes to just get some more value out of them and hopefully give us a better chance at timing the key. But the truth is, only one of these questions actually matters. In order to demonstrate this, we're going to be delving into the decision making of a demonology warlock navigating through a keystone level 18 tyrannical key. However, the thought process they undergo is something I'm certain we can all relate to, irrespective of our class or spec. Just so that we can all follow along, Demonology Warlocks have one major cooldown, Demonic Tyrant, coming with a 90 second cooldown and 15 second uptime. Like we can see, they're finishing up the penultimate boss, Dresseron, inside of Tyrannical Darkheart Thicket. Pausing here, let's start with a simple question. Demonic Tyrant's about to be ready, should they use it? Take a few seconds to think about your answer. The answer is of course, no. Clearly, we can see that the boss is dying way too fast and only has 4 million health left, which for a cooldown lasting 15 seconds wouldn't be worth using here, and our warlock inside of this 18 key makes the correct decision to hold onto it. But now, after jumping into the tunnel, all that stands between them and Xavius are a couple of very easy pulls. The tank grabs the first three mobs, which albeit is a rather small pull for a tyrannical key, but after all, they've just finished a boss, so the group may be low on cooldowns. So thinking about it, there's not much point popping Demonic Tyrant here either if our tank's planning on pulling something larger afterwards. Next, we encounter a pack of four. Again, we could pop here since there's an extra mob, meaning we get slightly more value. But upon further consideration, never mind. They're dying a bit too quickly. It's probably not going to be worth it after all. We'd be better off using Tyrant on the pack of bats. There are four of them, and they have slightly more health. But uh, hold on a second. Remember, this is a tyrannical key. We need to ensure we have cooldowns ready on pull for the boss, and using them here would be cutting it too close. So let's just hold off until we get to Zavius. At this point, we're now at the boss, meaning it's time to build up some resources and aim to set up our burst as efficiently as possible. All right, perfect. Now's the time to finally pop Tyrant. Regardless of your spec, what we just walked you through and the choices we saw our Warlock make weren't anything unusual. Every single one of them had a logical reason behind it. Yet what often gets overlooked is that within this time frame, almost two and a half minutes quietly ticked away, 
meaning our Warlock lost well over an entire use of their strongest offensive cooldown. And in this case, even if they popped it immediately on the first trash pack and got minimal value, they still would have cleared the dungeon faster. And what we saw here does and will happen numerous times throughout your keys. Not only losing you a ton of overall damage from losing multiple uses of your offensive cooldowns, but also greatly hindering the speed at which you clear the dungeon. All it takes is to check out any aspiring Mythic Plus player's logs or even streams and pay close attention to how often they use their offensive cooldowns. You'll very quickly notice that there's always gaps where they're holding on to them for extended periods for any number of reasons we just covered. Exactly like we see here with a Retribution Paladin's 1 minute static cooldown of Avenging Wrath. On the flip side, compare this to a higher rated player across the same dungeon, the same affixes, and more or less the same amount of pulls, and you'll quickly notice that they rarely ever hold onto their cooldowns for any extended period at all. In fact, they've almost always got near the maximum cast per minute compared to how long that dungeon took. When it comes to popping your offensive cooldowns, top players understand that you don't need to try to output the dungeon by overthinking when and how you're going to get the highest value out of your cooldowns, as at that point you're just outplaying yourself. And why this is the case is because top players view dungeons very differently to players like you or me. Instead of breaking a dungeon up into multiple checkpoints or pulls, they view it as one entire entity. Allow me to explain. At their simplest form, dungeons are essentially a race. We want to get from the start to the end in the quickest time possible. Take an offensive cooldown like Avenging Wrath. This can be viewed exactly like having a short burst of speed that you can use every minute for 20 seconds to get you to the finish line faster. For a lot of us though, we instead tend to overthink and overcomplicate this and thus start trying to optimize when and how we're using that boost, in turn unnecessarily slowing us down and also losing uses across the race as a whole. To put this theory to the test, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of this Retribution Paladin. They're about to engage one final pack before pulling the Ancient Protectors inside of 22 Tyrannical Everblue. Having the boss standing right in front of you and knowing that it's a Tyrannical Key, there's no denying that using Avenging Wrath here might seem like a complete waste. However, fast forward to the moment the boss is pulled, and we realize that even though we're dealing with one non-fortified trash pack, one minute has already passed. Just like that, an entire use of Avenging Wrath is lost. Now of course, you could argue that using Avenging Wrath would have disposed of the trash quicker, meaning they wouldn't have had it ready for when the boss is engaged. But hold that thought for a second. Here we find MDI Pro Shelly in the exact same situation, where they're fighting one final trash pack before they pull Oakheart on a 28 Tyrannical. You'd probably consider this a good time to start building up some damage and then aim to transition that to the boss especially as this is one of the more challenging Tyrannical bosses Season 3 has to offer. However, Shelly still pops his offensive cooldowns on the trash, knowing full well that they're going straight into a boss fight after this pull. Will he have his Tyrant ready for the boss? No, of course he won't. But ask yourself, why does that actually matter? Instead, the real question you need to ask is, did he get value? And the answer is yes. The bottom line is that his offensive cooldowns last for the full duration of a trash pack that had to die anyways, for him and his group to progress forward in that dungeon. Not to mention, more importantly, by using his cooldown here, there's a much higher chance that he gets an additional use across the dungeon as a whole. Remember, more uses, more damage. The faster the dungeon gets cleared. We never want to risk losing an entire use of our cooldown across the dungeon. Whether it stems from a mindset derived from being raiders and not wanting to pop cooldowns on trash, or maybe just that we always want to look good on the boss damage meters. There's this desire and belief that we always need to save cooldowns for the start of boss pulls in Mythic Plus. And this right here is hands down one of the biggest misconceptions that all aspiring Mythic Plus players fall into. You know this because you've done it yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. Once you start getting to the absolute cutting edge level of keys, there are certain bosses where sometimes you'll need to save offensive cooldowns. A couple that come to mind are Mindbender Gersha and Thrones of Tides in order to kill the Storm Flurry Totems quickly, or the first boss and Murazon's Rise to dispose of the Radiant Barrier as soon as possible. But even then, top players still only delay cooldowns if these situations become a pressure point that they can't otherwise overcome, and in doing so, they won't lose a use across the dungeon. Whereas, for the majority of us at our key levels, pressure points like this are actually far and few between, meaning it's perfectly fine to play slightly longer boss fights if we're speeding up the entirety of the dungeon as a whole. Remember those questions we mentioned at the start of the video? The ones we ask ourselves every dungeon? 
Well, the only one of these that really matters and the number one rule to get on the path for pushing hierarchies quicker and easier is to just simply ask yourself, will my offensive cooldown last for the duration of this pack? If the answer to that question is yes, then nine times out of 10, you should just pop them. Naturally, as always, there are exceptions to any rule, but if you consistently strive for the maximum amount of uses of your offensives across the dungeon as a whole, then you're going to see rapid improvement. So while we may have not told you exactly where to pop your cooldowns in every single dungeon like we said we would, hopefully what we've given you instead here is an understanding that learning when to pop your cooldowns in every dungeon really isn't that complicated at all, unless you decide to make it that way. A very simple solution to a very common problem. And cooldown usage is just one of the main pain points that our MDI and TGP experts pick up on when providing our subscribers with their free monthly VOD reviews. Yes, you heard that right. If you want personalized help from an expert player, we're offering one free VOD review every month just for signing up to our service. This is a rare opportunity for players just like you to get direct feedback from the cutting edge players that you see compete every year in the MDI and TGP. And as if that wasn't enticing enough, you also gain unlimited access to the most extensive collection of Mythic Plus guides available anywhere. Our mission at Skillcaps is simple, to deliver results that are guaranteed to improve your Mythic Plus score. And we're so confident in this that if you don't climb at least 500 IO when using our service, then you should get your money back, no questions asked. So what's there to lose? Visit the links in the description below to get started with an exclusive discount and begin your journey today. All right guys, that wraps it up for this one. We here at Skillcaps want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.